Hello and welcome to another episode of Tales of the Abyss. So, um, we forgot to read the synopsis last time, so, uh, Master, you dropped your diary! Um, I hope I was still writing in it. Um, you kind of had a fit, pushed it off, and you dropped it to you. <clears throat> wow! Nefri Osborne, the governor of Ketterberg, is Jade's sister. Nefri was a really nice person, unlike Jade. Repair of the Tartarus would take some time, so we decided to spend it looking around the town. But just as we were leaving, Nefri pulled me aside and told me to come see her alone, that she has something important to tell me. I wonder what it is. Kayla, do you want to go lay downstairs? The door is open if she does. Nefri wanted to tell me about the reason Jade invented Fomacry. I don't know how well I can sum it up, but I'll try and write it down here. Basically, Jade thought up Fomacry as a way to replicate a doll that Nefri broke. I guess that is kind of strange. Normally you'd just buy a new doll. But anyway, that was the first replica he created. Jade was a genius even when he was young, but he never... He was never really able to understand the death of living things. He even killed harmless monsters just for fun. It was Professor Nebulum, a private teacher, who changed him. But Jade is a fucking sociopath. But an experiment Jade performed out of curiosity went awry and killed Professor Nebulum. He used Fomacry on her while she was still breathing to try and revive her. That was the first living replica created. But even though it looked like her, it turned into a monster. Jade then had himself adopted by the Curtis family and, er and entered the army, all in order to revive Professor Nebulum. Nefri wanted me, another replica, to act as a deterrent to Jade. She was worried that he's still trying to revive Professor Nebula. But he doesn't look that way to me. I don't like him, but he does seem to have common sense. At least now. He probably wouldn't want to hear that from me. Jade knew what Nefri had told me, and he said he's not trying to revive Professor Nebula any longer. I think I can believe him when he says that. He understands death now. I saw that at Xeri. So he'll be okay. I think. Jade told me not to tell anyone about this. Yeah, I can't blame him. I wouldn't know how to explain it anyway. The following morning, the Tartarus was usable again. Time to get back on course for Rotelra Bridge. The incident in the forest. We landed at Rotelra Bridge to head over Rugnica for Grand Kokma, but before we reach the capital, we'll have to pass through Theor Forest to the north of Rotelra Bridge. We wasted enough time as it is. We'd better get moving. We reached the Ore Forest, but perhaps in preparation for war, it was completely sealed off. We tried to convince them to let us through, but we couldn't gain their trust yet, so we ended up waiting at the entrance while Jade went to Grand Kokma alone to get permission for us to pass. While we were waiting, all of a sudden we heard a soldier scream in the distance. That doesn't sound good. We better go see what's happening. Deeper in the forest, we found a soldier collapsed on the ground. It seems like he was attacked by Oracle Knights. They might be trying to break through the forest. At any rate, let's try and get to Grand Kokma. Just when we were about to reach Grand Kokma, Largo showed up and attacked us, so he's the one who attacks the Malkuth soldiers. But just then, Guy started attacking me all of a sudden, controlled by that curse slot. Ion said it was Sink that was controlling him. Then another earthquake occurred, and we managed to notice Sink hiding. Apparently, they were trying to capture Ion. Finally, some Malkuth soldiers showed up, and Largo and Sink ran off. We were able to protect Ion, but Guy's still unconscious. And we all ended up being arrested and taken to Grand Kokma. At the entrance to Grand Kokma, a soldier named General Frings took... Fring... Frings... Fringes... Frings took custody of us. Apparently, he had come to meet us at Jade's request. He got a room for us at the hotel so we could cure Guy's curse slot. I was going to follow him in, but Ion stopped me. Ion says that a curse slot can't make you do something you don't really want to do. So that means Guy must hate me enough to want to kill me. I can't believe it. Is it because of Axeriuth? Or did I hurt Guy without knowing it? General Frings noticed my shock and made some time for me before we went to see the Emperor. I guess I should try to cool myself down a bit. I was really down and didn't feel like talking to anyone, but Tyr brought me back to reality. Perhaps Guy did hate me once, she said, 
But even if so, he still came back to... <laughs> he still came back to wait for me at the Yulia Road exit. Huh. Sorry, I'm teasing my cat. <laughs> By fucking doing what? Holding a piece of popcorn over her head. Oh, yeah. Just her. Yeah. Gave it to her. I saw him express his trust in me through Ash's eyes. If there is a reason he hates me enough to want to kill me, I'm sure he'll tell me about it. I ought to trust him just like he trusted me. Okay, now's not the time to be sitting around depressed. Let's go find Jade and Natalia and see the Emperor. General Frings led us into the castle and we met with Emperor Peony. There we learned that things were just as bad as we had feared. Kimlaska had declared war on Malkuth, accusing them of killing me and Natalia in the Axeriuth incident. So that's why things are so tense here. And there are reports that the ground near St. Bina is sinking, so it looks like there's a good possibility St. Bina really will collapse. Even though its collapse isn't written in the score. Even worse, the Malkuth army was just sitting around despite being able to guess at the danger to St. Bina. Apparently they thought that Exerius was the work of Kim Laska, done in order to create a reason to go to war, and that if the Malkuth army moved to St. Bina, it would suffer the same fate. I asked Emperor Peony to let us take care of evacuating the people of St. Bina. If we're the only ones to enter the town, the Malkuth army will be safe, whatever happens. I thought we could gain his trust that way. Jade also spoke up for us, and it was decided to implement the plan. We would work with the forces stationed in St. Bina to evacuate the citizens of the town. We've got to hurry to St. Bina now, but I'm still worried about Guy. Is he doing okay? We should probably stop by the hotel before we leave. When we reached the hotel, we found out that Ion had, su had succeeded in removing the curse slot on Guy. Guy had already recovered, and he told me of his past. Guy was an ori a <laughs> Guy was originally from Malkuth. He was the successor to the house of Count Guardios, the family that controlled Hot Island. But the Hot War broke out when he was still young, and his family, his servants, all were killed by the Kimlaskan army. By my father, Duke Faber. Guy managed to survive and made his way into my mansion to exact revenge. But Guy really is mature. Even though I'm a replica, I'm still the son of his most hated enemy. It would only be natural for him to hate me. But he asked me to take me with him, saying there was something he wanted to confirm. I'm glad of it, but it must be hard on Guy. Still, he laughed like he always has, so I don't feel quite as bad. Guy really is a great person. I'm glad to have him as a friend. Not only Guy, but Annis and Ion also joined us as we left for St. Vina. Ion expressed a strong desire to come. Annis wanted him to stay here, but knowing him, he'd probably just come along anyway. And besides, it's easier to protect him if he's with us. Now we just need to head to St. Vina. Or for St. Vina, as the case may be. Let's do what we can. Master, stop hanging the piece of food over me, Elias! You can have it later, after we're done talking. Until then, I guess you'll just have to sit there and bat at it and look cute. Luke! <laughs> you called me cute! Uh, well, uh... I said I called me cute! I mean, I knew, uh, I, I said that on behalf of Thank you, you Tyr, because I know you think he's cute. I think no such thing! Master, why is your face slowly turning pink? My face is always pink! Shut up! Not that pink. Skip, please. Anna's in a bad <laughs> mood. A war going to a war's going to start and the town's about to collapse. A man's coming after Ion. And the six club generals won't go away. And Moses is scheming and <laughs> gloomy Etta. Gloomy Etta is gloomy, and Ash is weird, and and I'm poor, and I'm hungry, and <sighs> in a bad mood, Annis. Not, not at all. I'm just fine. What about you, guy? You feeling okay? Fine, thanks to Ion, but it looks like I caused him a lot of trouble. Ion, are you all right? You don't look. Too good. I used a Dothic phonic art, so I'm a little tired. That's all. Don't worry. You both look half dead right now. You should get some rest. 
and Ion, why don't you just stay here under Emperor Pini's protection? Please! No, we can't afford to lose any time, even if it means having to push ourselves a little bit. Okay, uh, yeah. lay down. Yeah, if St. Bina falls, things will get a lot worse. Still, whatever. Down! We're saving the night! Rest! <laughs> Guy, are you really feeling up to... I'm fine, I'm fine. Don't worry. I don't have any lingering hatred for you or anything. <laughs> That's true, sorry. <laughs> Ow. So you do for Ash. Don't ask. I'd hate for Natalia to overhear. So you do. Regardless, right now St. Bina is more important. It was my first place of refuge when I escaped from Hod. I want to save it. Yeah. We'll protect it no matter what! <laughs> well, let's do what we can. Alright. Guy has rejoined, so now we can go back to the bar. That's a shopping Hi, center. That's not a bar. Where the fuck is the bar? Bar, 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 that's a bar. Luke, don't you think it's a little early to drink? I'm just going where Guy wants me to take him. The bartender? Oh, you've done well to find me. I apologize for leaving the promised location. Let me pass on the arcane art to you at once. But why do you pass on your arcane arts in such a long and cumbersome manner? Yeah, you use Albert-style sword techniques, right? You could just learn from the arcane art text that Master Van left. Our sword is not of the main trunk of the Albert style. The sword technique I use is Sigmund style, which branched off from Albert style. Sigmund learned the sword from Flyle Albert. To protect Yulia and Albert, and act as their advance guard, he improved upon what he learned, creating the Sigmund style. Hearing that, if it would be convenient. Hearing that, it would be <laughs> Hearing that, if it became well known, it would publicize the weaknesses of the Albert style. He decreed the style's techniques be passed down orally. Also, the only users of the Sigmund style are members of the House of Guardios and those connected with it. Eh, eh. Cat, we don't know what the Kimlaska royalty or Duke Faber would do if our existence was discovered. I won't say anything to Father. Me neither. Thanks. So, did you learn the art? No, we've just been standing here talking. I'm the third teacher. You'll need to listen to two more. This sure Fucking damn it! This sure takes a, a while. Where can I find the fourth? He should be in front of a machine that turns. A machine that turns, huh? Okay, I'll see if I can find him. A phonic art factory? We'll get there eventually. Or a mill. <laughs> or then a fucking battleship. Alright, it is time to go to Saint Bubba -B Bina. Bina. We have to walk. Yeah, we certainly do. And there's a skit. Quit blaming yourself. Did you see a big hole in the ground? Yeah, more and more is falling into the cliff off, all because I destroyed the Axarius Sephiroth. You can stop saying that now, silly. What do you mean, silly? It's my responsibility! Oh, he's angry. But all this responsibility stuff is getting old. Give it a rest. 
We all know you're working hard, but don't go overboard. It's not good for you. Anis, are you trying to make me feel better? Yeah, well, maybe not the yay, fun, whoopee kind of thing, but kind of a let's do this zerg kind of thing. How's that? Hey, comfy! Comfying? Comforting! Well, I see one smart creature here. <laughs> Thanks, Anis. Sure thing. Oh man, he sure can be a pain. To Saint Bina. Saint Bina may be in trouble, but the potential for war worries me too. We have everyone we need here. Can we really afford to do nothing? We don't have a choice. Only we and Ash can move around freely. And who knows what Ash is up to? We've we've got to help Saint Bina first. If we save Saint Bina, that may lead to eliminating the misunderstanding between the two countries. And if the job is performed by those who are the key to averting the war, that will make it all the more meaningful. Ayla. So saving St. Bina could stop the war? I wouldn't count on it, but that would be the most desirable outcome. But if St. Bina falls, things will only become worse. Pessimism won't get us anywhere, you know. Yeah, let's go save St. Bina. Hopefully that'll take care of the war, too. And so we walk all the way back down the... What is that thing? It's a Drifloon! No! It's going to carry your children away. After this episode, I think somebody really needs to go read. She's pacing. Uh oh. Fine. But it's your turn all day tomorrow. That's fine. I'm hoping I'll feel better tomorrow. Oh, we don't have to do the stupid thing this time. No, you only have to do that once. Isn't that great? That's just wonderful. Yay! I have a feeling Annis has like a weird fear of bees, so just every time she sees one, she'll be like, ah! Well, at least there's no, uh, at least there's no hoverboard in this game. Oh, damn it! So we don't have to deal with a certain someone going... Weak. Oh, Weak. no, no. Now you're just wanting me to do that as one of our lists, and I fucking will take it. What are we talking about? <laughs> um, a certain Magilu. Oh, Magilu. Yo, Magilu. I'd love to. I'd love. To, I mean, we've already played um, but I mean the first the Exilia on the Saturday show. Aw, really? Well,. Yeah. Yeah, when are you going to pick the second one? After Hakuoki. Okay, so... <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> Years from now. Why does Facebook keep advertising the fucking... What? Utano Prince Sama makeup thing. Because you like thing? because you like licensed makeup things. I don't like Utano Prince Sama. <laughs> I like one song from that anime. Okay, bye. Are you ready? All right. Where's the guy who ripped us off? Oh, in the back. On the eastern side of the city. He's like all the way in the fucking back area. I think he's like in the building. Or he was. Wait, no. Further up. He was over here. Hey! You've got some explaining to do! 
through the fuck to them? I, I don't remember. The I... Black Dream fan club person. It was ages ago now. Is it in the thing? I don't think so. Did we write this one down? Uh, I don't think so. No, we didn't. Whoops. Well then, he can just be a random creepy guy. What are you mad about? Did you take care of paying the dues? The yearly dues were 1,000 gold. You only gave us 200. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure I gave you 1,000. Anyway, where's that newsletter? Here. Hey! You've got some explaining to do! I don't think that was the right line. <laughs> First, you give us the remaining 800 gold. Ah. Uh. I told you, I gave you all the gold. Do you even have any proof? Hey, now. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Here you are. Thank you. Here you are. Right, thanks, but I don't need it. What are you talking about? I've made up my mind. I've outgrown being a Black Dream fan. From now on, I'm going to be your fan instead. Oh, fuck. Wait a minute. I'm not ready. <laughs> it's fun to be popular, huh, Tear? So Tear's your name. That's a nice name. How old are you? What's your height? Are those your personal clothes? What kind of question is that? Are those your personal clothes? <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Or is that a cosplay? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, a cosplay. I fell in love with her strength, but she's so cute when she blushes too. I don't like this. Okay, I'm founding the Friends of Tear fan club. I don't like that. Huh. Yes, there's no accounting. Accounting. Yes, there's no yes, there's no accounting for taste. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Figure it out. Master. Hey, Mew. Mew. Do the yeah. thing. What? Ah. Which one? <laughs> I, okay. Um, you know, for that, I kind of like you. I do have like burning him. But I'm Burning okay. him would cause serious irrefer irreparable damage. Irreparable damage. <laughs> damage so great, uh, no doctor would refer you. Uh, oh, it's right. irreparable. Um, did I hit him again? Because he did it multiple times. He really should have kept his mouth shut when, when the guy started creeping up on you. That maybe he should have said your name. And maybe he, <laughs> he I maybe told you, Father, with Kite Sewer overrun. Wait, no, you're Glenn. Hi, Glenn. We might have put him up above somewhere. Or we didn't write him down. We didn't. This is not my fault. It's my fault for failing. No! Stop doing that! I told you, Father. With Kite Sewer overrun, we cannot afford to have troops leave the city. Oh, this is me, wasn't it? Probably. But, but if we don't evacuate the civilians, St. Peter will become the next Exerius. We cannot make a move without an order from His Imperial Majesty. If an order from Emperor Peony is what you're waiting for, we just brought it! Uh, Colonel Curtis, you're alive. What did His Majesty say? We're to evacuate the civilians to the Engave area. But that will leave me Lune. But that will mean leaving the city unguarded. Who cares? This whole area started to fall! My troops will take over escorting the civilians part way along the route. 
Once the civilians are out, please have your forces go west to join General Nordheim's forces on the East Rutnica Plains. Understood. So, we're abandoning St. Bina. I mean, if you want to be dead, fine. You can stay here. Right, I'll inform the residents. We'll help too. Right. Go, Luke. Luke sure is getting strong, isn't he? That he is. Nothing like how he was at Xeris. He certainly has changed. It may be that he's trying to keep himself busy to keep from dwelling on Xeris. You may be right. So? The important thing is that he's getting things done. True. Anyway, let's get moving ourselves. Yes. Right. The reborn hot-blooded idiot. Evacuating the entire population of a town certainly is backbreaking work. Yeah, we have to make things really clear or people could seriously panic. We'll have to check the entire town to make sure nobody's left behind. Women and children should get priority, right? Oh, and the elderly. Yes, that works. Mm, we'll probably need carts, too. I'll direct the injured people to the carts. Is that okay? Yes? Okay, I'm going to go check over there. Hmm. I have to admit, Luke has thrown me a bit off balance, being so active and helpful. Yeah, he's way different than he was in... Xerius. Xerius, Anis. Xerius! I'm sorry, he's thrown me through a loop, okay? It looks like he was serious about wanting to change. I guess. I kind of sort of admit he's doing an okay job. But the But he does look like an idiot. He does look like an idiot. That's because deep down he is he is essentially an idiot. Hey! Go over here and help! Don't just stand around like idiots! Well well, looks like we've become idiots as well. <laughs> Hi. He, called, he called you an idiot too. How the fuck did that mom carry that child? Well, she just kind of teleported the child into her hands. Wait, who's attacking us? Run! Oh, it's oh. you. What the hell? <laughs> I finally found you, Jade! Now yeah. is not the time, Dist. You never were able to tell when you're not wanted. Say what you like. I'm taking Bone Master Ion! I'm afraid not. Now move. Are you trying to save these worms? And after you gave up on Professor Nevelyn... Are you still pursuing that foolishness? You have no right to criticize me! You gave up before you even started! Now, hand over the phone, Master! I have freaked out my wife. Your wife almost got hit in the face twice. I'm Careful there! I'm sorry. You're not in the booth. Oh, you know what? I think we'll fight this thing next time on Let's Voice Act. Also, Sam, stop being quiet and talk in the chat, goddammit. I know you're here. <laughs> so then, till next time. Bye, guys. Get it! Hey, guys. Do you like our content? Do you want to support the show? Click the link in the description below to visit our donation page. All proceeds go towards new and better equipment and games you want to see us play. Everyone who donates will get a special shout out at the end of future videos, and we're currently working on setting up some special perks for you. If you don't want to donate, that's okay too. You can support us by subscribing and clicking that bell icon so you get notified whenever we put out a new video. A huge thank you to Kyle Sheridan for donating and helping to keep our show going. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Let's Voice Act, Tales of the Abyss. If you want to watch the last episode, click the box on the left. Or, if you want to listen to our fantasy journey of Dungeons & Dragons from our show called Saving Throw, 
then I suggest clicking the box on the right. So again, thanks for watching and see you next time. Janet?